Right, so I'm just continuing um, what I was saying in the first clip about this situation um, at a language school here in Thessaloniki. Um, what I'm trying to put together here to contrast is somebody who, as far as I can see, is a regular churchgoer. Okay, I mean, at least to some extent, somebody who goes there first thing in the morning on Sunday. That shows some level of dedication to the church. And on the hand, this person, it seems, as far as I can see, has done something which has required a sort of very deep level of disregard for the commandment that God has given to love our neighbour as ourself. Um, and at that, that point would seem to me to tie in with, with something in, in, in wider Greek society itself. That here is a people who are influenced by the church. The, the church has a strong place. People are church goers. And yet it's a society, as we know, which has problems. And this is now sort of internationally known. Now, the first thing I'd say, I think some of these problems are caused from outside. I don't want to you know, be too hard on my hosts, and, I, and as I've said in my last video, I say this with all respect to them. You know, I'm not. I'm, I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to look at the situation and, and give some insight or point to some issues. So, I believe that the the, the, the Greek-speaking people have, have had a pretty broad deal from the international community over the years, and um, I, don't, I think this current crisis is no exception. So. You know, there are a lot of issues there which we can talk about separately. Um, so that's one aspect of it. But, but there is an aspect of, of the way that Greek society is being structured, which seems to lack um, regard for, for, for what I call the public good. It seems to me that if you apply the principle of love your neighbour as yourself, if you apply the Sermon on the Mount, um, to the hearts and minds of people, put it that way, then that will have an effect on society. People will eventually realise that it has social implications, that, that, that they shouldn't be interested just in their own immediate circle and the good of those people, but, in, but in, they have to think of the whole community. Um, and it seems to me that when you have corruption, when you have um, bureaucracy, when, when you have these things, that, it, that this, it, there's a weak grasp on the principle of love of neighbour. I don't know if that's obvious to you, um, but it seems so to me. Uh, if you have heavy bureaucracy, okay, what, what is the influence? Heavy bureaucracy uh, makes life difficult for ordinary working people especially people who want to have businesses, so trades people, uh, business owners, and so on. There's a lot of things to deal with, a lot of barriers to cross, a lot of red tape to cut. So it doesn't make life any easier. And also, unfortunately, has a tendency to create a certain sort of class of people who have a not very desirable attitude. Um, and I, I certainly got this feeling here in Greece that, you know, that... that at least when I came, you know, it still existed this idea, you know, you want a job in the public sector because it's secure, it's well paid, and you can't get sacked, you can't, can't get fired. You know, if, you, if you're a public servant, so-called here, you can't actually be fired. And it's this security and the income which seems to have a higher role from actually some idea of, you know, doing something useful and actually helping other people. Um, so, and when we see that, when we see things like, you know, constant strikes and disturbances, which, which actually, again, it's, it's the working people, it's the people with businesses on who suffer. Well, the farmers have to throw away their fruit because of the lorry strike we have at the moment, and so on. Um, you know, it shows to me that somehow the, the, the message of love your neighbour has, has failed to take hold, that people are 
only seeing it on the most immediate, okay, I can love my, my, my family, I must look after them, my friends, my acquaintances. Um, but uh, somehow the community as a whole um, doesn't seem to feature so high in concern, concerns of people. So I just feel that maybe the church has some role in this, the church has some responsibility in this area. Um, the church I mentioned where I, I met the person who, who stole somebody else's business um, is a place where they don't have always have preaching. For some reason, this, you know, the, the, the priests there don't see themselves as bound to provide any substantial preaching. I've certainly saw some short message for a minute or two. Um, but, but but some sort of lengthy sermon in itself, just the act of sermon, I'm not talking anything about the content of it, but even the, the idea of having a, a lengthy sermon is not always fulfilled there. Um, and uh, this is, in some Orthodox churches this is the case. Uh, I mean, I could say the main ones here, the main, the big churches here in the Centre Thessaloniki, it's not, not the case. They do have solid sermons, at least in, in adequate length, I would say. Um, but I have been to places where there's been more, more little or nothing. Um, and that's just the principle of having something. And then the, the next question is the content. Um, and it just seems to me that content relating to loving your neighbour, to denying yourself, to looking to the interest of others, which is, 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 is essential Christian message, um, could perhaps be more prominent. I mean, uh, you know, in view of the fact that such a large number of people go to church, that 10% of the population, roughly speaking, is there. Well, if if they were, if if, if the message of love your neighbour as yourself, the golden rule after all, and the message of the Sermon on the Mount were somehow systematically expounded to these people over a period of months, it must it would surely have a, a, an effect on society where where these things are somehow not kept um, so that's just my thought um, I, don't, I don't as I say you know nowhere is perfect I'm not proclaiming one nation more than another I'm just concerned because I see things around me which needn't happen it seems um, and I'm, I'm just quite surprised by this, so so I see on one hand there is some communion with God here, which which is is, is missing from the West. Some some retention of the of the essential truths of Christianity, which is missing in the West. Um, but perhaps more thought could be given to to a more um, thoroughgoing exposure of the minds of the people to the Word of God. To, to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and maybe we, we would have some it, this would help society in a way so I'm just saying there's a treasure maybe waiting um, for the Orthodox Church which it can um, you know make greater use of um, and and uh, added to its, its its mystical treasure its treasure of these traditions that it has something which has perhaps borne fruit in other countries, in, in particular, I would say, in, in Protestant countries, um, following the Reformation, where where it seems to me that some some of the, the basic messages of, of of an ethical nature um, left a mark on society as a whole. So that's my thought, really. That's all I want to say. I hope it's uh, of some use to you, and I'm always glad to hear any feedback which is offered in the same spirit. So thank you very much for your time.